Good morning. Today I would like to share part four, importing MSMS Spectra, as a webinar I'm producing to share with people about the LC MS unknown identifications using MSMS libraries. I found that a lot of people use electron ionization or EI type spectra for NIST software for doing identifications, but not as much for MSMS libraries. And I think it's a very, a very powerful tool. So I wanted to create a series of webinars that talked about it. And I have an eight part series, and this is part four that talks about the importing, but take a look at the rest of them. This is just how to get the data from your data system, like maybe in this case, I'm, I will demonstrate Mass Hunter today to get it over to the NIST for searching. And I want to mention that every one of these webinars or series has a very detailed handout that comes with it. And you really should look through it. Today, I will just show you an overview to give you an idea of how it works. But if you really want to understand, you really need to, to look into these very detailed handouts that I have with the software. So take a look at those. So let's get started today. Let's, let's start looking at the software. This is the NIST search software. We just need to make sure it's set up properly. So I'm, today I'll just be doing a peak matching comparison of things. So you look at the unknown, which is up here at the top, and you find the best hit of this in the library, in the, in the NIST libraries. So the things that you're interested in doing, I want to just do a direct peak matching. And we talk about the three types of searches that we do in another part of the series, but today we'll just be demonstrating for simplicity, the direct peak matching MSMS mode of searching. So we'll, I've saved that configuration, I bring it back up. One of the things I want to change today is I really don't want automation on. You can make the libraries search when they come in, you can bring in the entries and they search automatically. But the Agilent software that I'm demonstrating today also brings in the spectrum, the non-MSMS spectrum with the lock mass. So I don't want to search all of them. I'll just search them manually after I get them transferred from Mass Hunter. So we'll turn that off and say, okay. There's some filters you need to be aware of that you can filter by only the best matching only by CAS number. So if you get a lot of things at different energies, you can make the list that you look at simpler by turning that on. But let's turn it off initially so we don't do any filtering in on the imported spectra that we search. And also this other one, this, this funnel here searches and sorts and filters by a lot of different parameters that are shown here. So let's turn that off too, just to make sure initially that we're not filtering anything when we bring it in and do the searches. One other option that you might want to take a look at is the spectrum import options. Every spectrum that's brought in is run through this filter in a sense. You can put the number of decimal places. If you have noise, this could be very handy. You can get rid of the percent of maximum. So if you have a noisy spectra or a group of noisy spectra, you can get rid of some of the small ions automatically as they come in. And we want to select the accurate mass to charge for bringing in the data. Since all the data that I'll be showing today from the mass hunter is accurate mass. So in general, you need to have that selected. So those are some of the standard settings. And those settings are shown in some of the other handouts from the other sessions where it shows you how to set up the different searches. We'll say, OK, there. In Mass Hunter, they do a good job. Uh, they know they put this return error in their software that allows me to switch to caller. So when I switch to caller, it'll automatically go back to where I came from. In this case, I already had Mass Hunter opened. And I have some spectra here that I, I want to take into the NIST search and search. In this case, you can select sin single spectra just by left mouse clicking on one, but I want to do three just for a little bit uh, more efficiency. So I'm going to pick uh, three. I'm holding the control button on my keypad so I can select more than one. I've selected now three. You can see they're highlighted three, nine. Let's do 12 also. Now, after I have them selected, I, I right click on any one of the selected ones and say, search using NIST MS program. It will send all three over into the NIST search software. And here I didn't tell it to do a search when it came in because it, as I said before, this is the spectrum from the Agilent software. Where it has the lock masses still present. So I don't, I'm not interested in seeing those. So. I'll get rid of those, the first one and every one. So this is compound three. It has the second one will be the MSMS. And for nine, the first one will be the lock mass again. 
et cetera, for compound 12. So I'm going to hold the control key again, and I'm, I will select three, three, and the first one for nine, and 12. And those are the ones that have the lock mass. And now I've selected them all, and I can say, click, right click on my mouse and say cut. So I've kind of cleaned it up, just to clean it up a little bit so I'm not looking at all the rest of them. But in general, you'll need to, if you bring a lot of things in, you'll always want to clean up. And a lot of times you might just want to say, select all and then say cut. And it'll clean up this whole window where you bring things into the library. So to search it, you can hit the go button if you want to. I prefer just to hit double uh, left mouse button quickly. So I double click on it. It did a search of a million uh, total spectra. It told you it found 100 spectra. If you look at the top, it does a pre-search to kind of minimize the number of things that it does the full search on. So it brought 100 spectra in that it thought were worth doing a full search on. It also tells you down at the bottom what type of search. We're doing a simple a peak matching search, and this is what will be run the next time. This is what was run this time. So it tells you a lot of things. And in the middle bar here shows you what sh which libraries it searched, the low resolution, NIST, the high resolution NIST, and the APCI NIST. Those are the three libraries that come with the NIST search software in version 2020. Well, also, I don't care much for the histogram, so I'll push this up out of the way. I just grabbed it with my left mouse button. You can always refine any of these, and we talked about that in session one to make it look like you want to, but I'll just get rid of that. But I did search all of those. You can see that it found lots of entries for trimethoprim, and you can see they're just a lot in the NIST library, they'll have it at a lot of energies just because the NIST, in general, MSM, MS spectra are not real reproducible at, because of the different energies. So you just look at a lot of different energies and they add a lot of different energies to the library, but there's a lot of them to look here. I really wanna know if there, is there anything else besides trimethoprim in here that I'm interested in? Well, if I go up to this best matching only, this little thing looks like a arrow through a target and click on it, it'll get rid of everything with the same CAS number. And so when I do that, now my first hit still looks good, 969. And you can see the unknowns on the top, the knowns on the bottom, and then you have the mirror image so you can compare, but you can select the first one over in the hit list over here. And then I can use the arrow keys to quickly step through them. So I'm on my keyboard stepping through them. And you can visually, I'm just looking over here at the display to decide if there's anything useful to look at. You can see it falls off fairly quickly. We've fallen from a match of 969 down to 313 to 291. So not much of interest there. So that's one way we can filter it. You can see when you turn the filter on, let's turn it off again. You can see, you can do this filter after the search. You don't have to search again. When I click on this, you can see we had 100 originally. When I put the filter on, it goes to 30. So that's one way to filter it. Let's, let's do another search. Let's do the search of the second compound. And again, we'll hit the go button instead of double uh, left mouse button quickly. We'll just do the go. That's another way to do it. You can see here again, we have the same compound over and over and over again. So we had 100 spectra again brought in for consideration by the final search. Let's put the target on here and see what it does. It takes it down to 34 spectra. There's probably some things that you might want to step through and decide if this could be your unknown because the next one's only 834, 811, 777. So you might want to step through three or four of those before you decide that this is your best proposed identity for your unknown. There's one other way you can filter things up here. Let's sort of turn the target back off to open it up. So we go back to our 100 spectra. This thing that looks like a filter funnel, this searches, as we said, by a lot of different things. You can enable filtering here and select different parameters that you want to eliminate these types of things from the hit list, from the things from the library. So let's enable the filtering here with the ones that are selected right now and see what happens to our number. Remember, we started with 100 up there. So we say, okay, and it's dropped it to 54 spectra. So it cleaned it up a little bit again. And if you, you can apply these two together, you can go up and apply the best matching only and it'll drop it down to 11. So you can use these filters to simplify your results. Just be careful, don't, to, don't eliminate something that might be useful to you by over filtering. So I usually initially just open these up until I get an idea of what I would like to search, what I find in my search results. But that's pretty much the, how you do the back and forth between them. It's very easy. I've uh, personally, I've only used Agilent and I've used Thermo 
and I've used waters and all of those have the, the buttons that internally that easily transfer things back and forth. Some of the manufacturers might not have the button, but they might have another way. Another way is if you right click on our search uh, import box here and say right click and say import. And on the import list, you can see if you go down to the bottom here, there's a lots of different ways you can import files. And one way the manufacturer might do is to export their spectrum of interest into one of these file formats. And then you would have to import it into the program to process. So that's pretty much an overview. We've shown how to bring things in, bring multiple things in, how to filter things, uh, how to change the import options to get rid of noise and how to clean up and get rid of your window when you decide you don't want things anymore. Like in this case, let's clean up a little bit here. We can say uh, select all, it selects all, and then we can right click and say cut. Now we're ready to start another study and we don't have things that are in our way. So thank you. Take a look at some of the other sessions and hopefully these will be useful to you.